morning everyone it's good to be with you again this morning um, we are busy on our journey into holiness so I'm just going to open with prayer so thank you Lord that you are with us that you will guide us that you will open our ears and our eyes really work with us Lord Help us, help us to truly understand what your word is saying to us, what is important to you. Thank you for this opportunity and this gathering, and I thank you that your blessing is on it. Amen. So, we're talking about holiness and um, why it's important. And I, that is the big thing now. But I think we should focus on is why do this journey? Why even why even take the time? And I personally believe it is the most important journey of our lives. And it's it's the start to walking with God. And I think without holiness there is no journey with God. Um as we read in as Leviticus now the book of Leviticus is um, is uh, is a challenge, but it is all it's all about the sacrifices and the burnt offerings and sin offerings and everything. But it is about it is about holiness, and so it is really if you have the courage, <laughs> start just asking the Holy Spirit to to guide you through that book, and just start taking it bit by bit and ask. In our daily life, what does this mean? How does what is said here with this offering and that offering, what does it mean now? Um, it really is, uh, it says a lot of revelation in that book, which I only discovered after I came to the end of that book. While I was going through it, was, <laughs> it was difficult. But, um, but God is faithful and the Holy Spirit is here to be our teacher. The Word says you need no one to teach you but the Holy Spirit. So ask Him to help you. And really go and look at the book. But I'm going to read one piece. And uh, this is this is after uh, Aaron's two of his children died um, for bringing the wrong fire. Um, so then God said to Moses, and then Mo the scripture is, Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord said. I will be treated as holy by those who approach me. And before all people, I will be honored. I think it's important for us to understand um, that there is a fear of God that has to be in us. Not, not the kind of fear we have of death and of things happening, but a awe, a respect um, of God. You cannot, you cannot co-represent God if, you, if you're doing it in the kind of conduct that God would frown upon. Because then you're misrepresenting God and you could be leading people astray. I think sadly a, a big thing in our, in our walk with God, and especially when, we, when we're fresh in the faith and you know, we're on fire, and, and, but we haven't walked the journey yet. We haven't gone through the refining, and we, we haven't died to ourselves yet. Then we can come across as very judgmental uh, to, to people. So trying to bring them in, they feel like we're finding faults with them and criticizing them. And we actually end up pushing them away from God. So, so I think it's, um, it is really important for us to understand that we have to die to ourselves and our opinion when we want to be disciples for the Lord and if we, when we want to spread His word. So, so the, the walk into holiness, we, we do that as a worship to God. We do that to glorify God with who we are and we are here to bring His kingdom. So I've said before that you cannot bring the kingdom, you cannot know what to, how you must show yourself if you're not reading the Bible. Um, 
um, it just is impossible. You cannot know the rules of the place that you're representing if you don't have the rule book. So I'm going to once again say, please start reading your Bible. If you need guidance, there's so many study guides on how to read the Bible in a certain amount of time. And it really is worthwhile to read the, the, the Bible from beginning to end. Um, I've not done it this year for the first time. I'm not finished yet. Um, but I could see how things just start fitting into each other. And there's so much more revelation. So please do not neglect reading your Bible. Make time for it. Because you're not going to represent God right as a citizen of his kingdom if you do not know what that kingdom looks like and what it's about. So in Peter, this weekend, um, I just come, came across a lot of readings that, that was just really good. So I thought I'll share it. It's very much on topic with what we're busy with. And it's um, Peter 1, verse 18. And it's 1 Peter. And it says, For you know that you were not redeemed from your useless, spiritually, spirit, spiritually unproductive way of life, inherited by, by tradition, from your forefathers with perishable things, like silver and gold. But you were actually purchased with the precious blood, like that of a sacrificial lamb, unblemished and spotless, the precise blood, the precious, priceless blood of Jesus Christ. And says, and then in verse 23, the same, also 1 Peter 1, verse 23, it says, For you have been born again, that is reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose, not of seed which is perishable, but from that which is imperishable and immortal, that is, through the living and everlasting word of God. So, if you are newborn, if you are reborn, if you are born from above, you must realize that we are not from here. And that is something we must understand. We are not from here. We are reborn from above. You are a new creation. So you do not have to fall for the lies of this world. Jesus died on the cross for you. He took all your sins upon himself to set you free. That means even if you think you cannot do it, you know, and we like to say, I'm only human, I make mistakes. It is possible to live a sinless life because we have now Christ in us and we've got the Holy Spirit to guide us. Before the crucifixion of Christ, it wasn't possible because on our own, we cannot do it. It is impossible. But with Jesus, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, it is possible to live a holy, consecrated, sinless life. It doesn't happen overnight. We've, we've spoken about in previous sessions that it's a journey that we go through. It is, not, it is not magic. And it takes your commitment to look at this word, to see what it says, and to believe it. But we cannot hide behind the thing of we are all just human. And yes, we will make mistakes and we are quick to repent. And the repentance brings change and the repentance cleanses us. How many times did God in the Old Testament say to Israel when they sinned and they were making so angry and he said, if only my people would repent and turn from their ways, then, then I would bless them and I will give them. And there's prosperity and there's, there's, oh, there's so many promises. But it always happens and it always comes with a if. If you do your part, God does his part. God is always waiting for you to turn your way, to turn away from your sinless, sinful life. He is always waiting. 
He's always waiting for you. And if you change your ways, he's right there. You don't have to go looking for him. The thing is, sin separates us from God. It separates us. And the more it separates us, the more difficult it is for us to turn back because we just get filled with guilt and shame. And God says, if only my people will repent, turn from their ways, then I will bless them. We are here for His purpose. So let's not live our lives wasting our time with things of this world. Let's figure out what is our purpose. Why are we here? Because it must be important if God sent us here with a purpose, isn't it? So chase it. Look for it. Don't settle for, for being like everybody else. Don't settle for one day a week to read the Bible and, or listen to a word. Do your own studies. Get your own opinions. Get your own revelation from the Holy Spirit. It is important. Just gonna read here. But you also also Peter, it's one Peter two verse nine. It says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called you. You are a holy priesthood. If you go read in the Old Testament how much how much the priests had to do to how would they clean, what did they have to wear? There was so much they weren't right like the people. They weren't like the people on the outside. God expects you holiness from you if you're his priesthood. But what is wonderful is when Jesus died on the cross, that veil, that veil that was between the Holy of Holies and the holy place, that veil was torn so that we can have direct, direct communication. And Jesus has become our door. So that we don't have to go through a priest. You don't have to always go through a pastor or a believer. You don't have to go confess your sins to someone first and then go to God. You can go to God and let Him guide you so that He shows you who is the people that you can trust. Who is the people you go to to help you to learn. Who is the teachers He wants you to go to. Go first to God yourself. Don't always want someone else to do it for you. Go to Jesus. He is the only door to the Father for you. Don't go to man. We get together and we we have teachers so that we can strengthen each other and build each other up. But you have to have your own personal relationship with God. It is important for you to have your own relationship with God because it's only there that God can show you your own personal purpose that He sent you here for. And then on 2 P- 1 Peter 2 verse 11 it says, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from the sensual urges, those dishonorable desires that wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the unsaved Gentiles. Conduct yourselves honorable with graciousness and integrity, so that for whatever reason that may slander you as evildoers, they may slander you as evildoers, yet by observing, observing your good deeds, they may instead come to glory, glorify God in the day of visitation, when he looks upon them with mercy. You'll see in the beginning it says, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world. You are not, you are not here to please the people, but you are here to be a representative of who Jesus is. 
and Jesus lived a sinless life. He was an example for us. It says here in 1 Peter 2 verse 21, For as a believer you have been called for his purpose since Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you may follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, nor was deceit ever found in his mouth. While being reviled and insulted, he did not revile or insult in return. While suffering, he made no threats of vengeance, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges fairly. We see a lot in the character of Jesus. And it says here, so that you may follow in his footsteps. Now I just I just wanted to I just wanted to, I really would want to get this point across because I think it's what what has made Christian Christianity just a religion. Is that there's no personal experience, there's no thriving for holiness, there's no excellence. As they should be in the body of Christ. So in the beginning I said, remember that in whatever you do, start taking Jesus with you. What you're watching, what you're listening to, what people you're hanging out with. Now it says Jesus sat with the ungodly, he sat with the sinners and the tax collectors, but he didn't sit with them and do what they did. He didn't sit with them and be quiet if they insulted or blasphemed. He sat with them to teach them, to show them example of the kingdom where he came from. He sat with them to save them. Just remember that. Because that is also something we hide behind. You know, when we have this, the wrong kind of friends or we're going to the wrong kind of places. If you are going there looking like them and you do not stand out like a sore thumb, you're doing something wrong. Take a good look at your life. There's promises in this book, in, this, in a life of holiness. And there is finding the purpose that you are created for, which is a place where you will find rest and peace and joy because you are doing, you are doing exactly what you were born to do. It's what we all want. We want to know why we're here. So I'm just going to close up with a psalm that we, especially in this time when Corona started, this is a verse, verse 90, Psalm 91, that just came, came up a lot as something that we pray for protection. So I just want to point out some things here with this. It says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, now I want to point out, it says, if you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent.
Now this comes with, if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the Most High your dwelling. Now if the Lord your God is your dwelling place, you are holy because you can only be with the Lord if you are in His holiness. And it says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High. If you dwell there, that means you stay in His presence. That means you're in things that's about God. That is where you're safe. It is when we step out into darkness, we step out and into a sinful life. We take ourselves out under the covering of God. And then we say, why wasn't God there? Why did this happen? Sin separates us from God. This protection comes at a price, and the price is your life. When you give your life to God, He says, Take your cross and follow me. Pick up your cross. And you were merged into His death. It means you don't exist anymore. The, the worldly you do not exist anymore. You've given your life to Christ. And for that, he gives his angels special charge over you. It says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the Lord himself that says this. God is not a liar. He says, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So it starts off with whoever dwells in the shelter. And then it says what happens. Then it says, if you say, and you make him your dwelling place. And then God says, because he loves me and acknowledges my name. I will. So, if you look at the reason this morning for why holiness, here is your answer. God, to truly have a life with God, to truly be a believer, you have to actually be a believer. You have to take this word and believe everything that's written in it. You have to take these promises, that's why you confess. Just confess with your mouth, decree, declare, because the word is truth. So if you declare and decree things coming from this word over your life in every situation, the Lord will respond. His angels will respond because they respond to the word of God. Start looking at your life. We are all on a journey. And I'm so blessed to be on this journey with you. Please don't feel any condemnation. All these things that I'm sharing with you, I'm also reminding myself of. Self of. Going into this journey with you helps me also into a deeper level of holiness with God, into reminding myself in everything. But it's a journey, and it's a good one, and it's, it's one that will give us peace and rest in a time of turmoil. It will make us understand that if only we believe, it will be there. You know, if you look at the healings that Jesus did in his Gospels, it says, your faith has healed you. Because of his faith, his faith, his faith. Faith is the currency in heaven. Faith opens up the promises in this word. You have to believe it for it to operate in your world. Believing is seeing. It's not like the world says seeing is believing. So be blessed on this journey and really go in the word. First Peter, really go read that whole book. It's a short book. But read it and really take it in. And so, and then also remember who Peter was. 
before Pentecost, before he got the Holy Spirit within him. And just see, just see how he changed once he had the Holy Spirit. And if you haven't seen this change in your life yet, really go to God and say, God, I want your Holy Spirit. I need your Holy Spirit. I want the power of your Holy Spirit to help me refine my life. Make this journey. Don't waste another day. Make today the day that you decide that you want to have a closer relationship with God. So I'm just going to close. I'm going to say thank you, Father God. Thank you that you care about us and that you do not give up on us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us into your ways. Thank you for your refining fire that cleanses us. Thank you that you will give your angels a special charge now over each person listening to this message and send your angels out to perform your word and to keep the seed that has been planted from being snatched away by the evil one. Thank you for this new day, this new journey. Thank you for today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. May today be your day to shine. I'll see you again soon.